This tutorial features a step-by-step -step guide on measuring a residential house and backyard with Mosher. You'll learn how to use layers to capture key features including the house footprint, backyard, pool and sprinkler locations. Additionally, we'll show you how to calculate the surface area of the backyard where the sprinklers are located and label each sprinkler's position. To get started, we'll begin with an open shape measurement to establish a fixed reference point, which will serve as a central location to return to when adding each layer. This first edge acts as a reference or datum line, ensuring the accurate placement of subsequent shapes as part of the overall measurement. Turn on the Mosher device by raising it vertically and rotating it 180 degrees back and forth until the LED flashes blue. Once the LED turns red, place the device at your starting point, aligning it with the edge of the wall. Next, measure a straight A to B line using the stick to capture the datum line for the additional layers. After completing this measurement, tap the red stop icon and save by tapping File, then Save and choose a folder and file name. We first want to capture the footprint of the house using wall path type, so we'll switch to measuring without the stick. When using your Mosher device without the stick, you need to move the measuring reference point to the sharp corner point of the device. To adjust the app settings, tap the cog, then tap on measuring options, and then tap on Use Mosher Stick Attachment and select No. To start the house footprint, tap Layers in the bottom right corner of the app, then tap Add Layer. The app will prompt you to place your device at the shared origin, which is the starting point for the base layer, shown in black on the initial wall. Align the device at the origin and wait for the measurement to be captured. Next, you'll be prompted to capture a second point along the initial edge, also shown as a black line in the app. While the shared origin remains fixed, the second point can be placed slightly ahead or behind the initial point. After capturing the second point, the path type will automatically switch to ignore line. We now make our way to the far side of the house, pausing along the route to ensure the timer bar is in the green zone and no later than the amber zone when pausing to maintain accuracy. Due to a high front wall and palm trees, we won't be able to return to the starting point. Instead, we'll close the shape at the front wall of the property. While this approach introduces a start-finish error, it's acceptable for this tutorial as our focus is on capturing the building's overall outline rather than detailed features like windows or doors. At our last pause point, we scroll through the path type options and select Wall. Next, we place the Mosher device vertically against the wall and capture a pause point measurement. From here, we walk briskly, pausing as needed while ensuring the timer bar remains in the green zone for accuracy. As we change planes, Mosher automatically extrapolates the corners, mapping the outline in real time. For angled walls or features like windows, Pause briefly at each window pane or angle to capture accurate points. Continue measuring, remembering to pause while in the green zone of the timer bar. We left the front gate open in preparation to walk around the gated wall attached to the house. Using the wall path type, we navigate around palm tree obstacles, placing the device vertically against the inside wall of the garage to capture the blueprint. We pause at key points, including the middle of the garage doors and the far inside wall to ensure an accurate outline. The next section of the house features walls surrounded by dense palm trees, making it too far to reach within the timer bar zones. To handle this, we lay the device flat against the ground with the Mosher logo facing up. When placed this way, Mosher automatically switches to Ignore Line, meaning this point will be ignored until the device is next placed vertically against a wall edge. As we navigate through the trees, we place the device against the next two walls to capture their points, then lay it flat against the ground on the driveway to skip the point. For the final point, we get as close as possible to the far side of the wall, where the corner is blocked by palm trees and plants. To complete the measurement, we tap on the red stop icon. Mosher automatically extrapolates the final point to close the shape. Although this method may result in a slightly higher start finish error, it's sufficient for capturing an overall outline of the house. We now save our measurement.
For the next layer, we'll use the Mosher stick. To enable this, tap the cog icon, go to measuring options, select use Mosher stick attachment and tap yes. Then tap layers to add the next layer for the backyard. Start by gently placing the device at the origin point to retrace the A to B measurement. Once complete, the path type automatically switches to ignore line until we select a new path type for the area we want to measure. For this backyard area, we select straight line and start measuring the outer perimeter by aligning the reference point into each corner. For accuracy, maintain a steady pace, place the device gently but quickly against the edge and rotate it smoothly, avoiding any abrupt movements. Mosher's path types allows you to choose the best option for capturing shape details. For a small curve, we select trace line and capture the curved measurement. For the arc wall, we switch to the arc path type. Here, we capture at least three points, the start, the middle, and the end of the arc. Note how the second point creates a straight line, while the third point defines the curve, forming a best fit arc upon completion. We then switch back to straight line and continue around the perimeter. To measure the volume within this same layer, we don't stop the measurement after returning to the starting point. Instead, we switch to the points path type to capture all grade changes within the perimeter. For accurate results, follow a consistent pattern when capturing grade changes. Use a zigzagging pattern for square or rectangular areas or a spiraling pattern for circular ones. In this example, we use a zigzagging pattern to work our way across the space. The key is maintaining consistency and deliberation in your technique. While capturing volume may involve more rapid device movement, it's important to plan each motion carefully, rotating gently and keeping the device still when capturing points to avoid errors. Once all the desired points are captured, return to the perimeter starting point to capture a final point for improved accuracy. Then stop the measurement and save it, capturing both perimeter and surface area data within one layer. Next, we captured the sprinkler locations by adding another layer. We placed cones at each sprinkler location to mark them clearly and use the circle path type to capture these points, as we wanted to label them. To begin, rotate the device to turn it on, then gently place it at the origin point to retrace the A to B measurement. As a reminder, the app switches to ignore line automatically until a new path type is selected. To capture a sprinkler location, place the device at the edge of the cone and select the circle path type. Be sure to measure at least three points around the edge of the cone for accuracy. When using a circle path type, you don't need to return to the starting point. Instead, position the device in a triangular grid pattern. After capturing the third point, the app will display the best fit circle passing through as many of the measured points as possible. Next, scroll through the app and select the ignore line path type before walking to the next cone. Once at the cone's edge, change the path type back to circle and measure three points around the edge as before. Repeat these steps for the second and third cones. Now let's label these sprinkler locations. Tap on a point around the first measured circle, select Edit, then choose Edit Label. You can name it whatever you like. In this case, we'll label it Sprinkler 1. The point is now labeled within your measurement for easy reference, showing the sprinkler location in the middle of the circle. Repeat these steps for Sprinkler 2 and Sprinkler 3 to label all points. Next, we'll add a new layer to capture the pool area. Follow the same initial steps as before, retracing the reference edge and in ignore line path type, make your way to the pool. Once you arrive at the pool edge, align the reference edge into the corner and switch to the straight line path type. Begin measuring around the pool perimeter, placing the device quickly but gently at each corner to capture data. When you reach the steps, Capture the detail of each step by placing the device at key points. First at the bottom edge of the step, then at the top of the same step, followed by the back edge, and finally the top edge of the next step. This method ensures each step is accurately mapped. 
Using the straight line path type allows you to measure in a straight line regardless of the route taken to get there. If there's an obstacle in the way, simply navigate around or over it. Once the device is placed back down against the pool edge, it will have captured a straight line measurement between the two points. Finally, repeat the process of capturing the steps as you descend back to the original ground level, ensuring all points are accurately recorded. We make our way back to the origin point to close the perimeter, walking at a brisk pace, placing the device down gently and rotating it steadily, not abruptly. To hide the initial reference edge in the Mosher app, tap on Layers. Next, locate the top layer which represents the reference edge. Tap the eye icon next to this layer to hide it. If you'd like to rename this layer for better organization, tap the three horizontal dots above the eye icon. Then select Rename and enter a new name for the layer. Once you've done that, tap the X in the top right corner to close the menu and you'll see that the reference edge is no longer displayed on your canvas. It's worth noting that the reference edge wasn't chosen randomly. We selected a centrally located, easily repeatable line, longer than 20 feet or 6 meters, to keep it easy to add layers without walking to a distant edge. If you want to inspect a particular layer, such as the surface area of the backyard where the sprinklers are located, a quick shortcut is to tap on Layers, and then tap on the eye icon positioned above all of the layers. This will turn off all layers, which is useful if you have many layers. You can then tap on the eye icon of the layer you want to see on your canvas. Here, we tap on New Patio Area and then tap on the X. We now see just this area on the canvas. Using two fingers, you can zoom in and tap on any point. Once this point is selected, the cross-section tool will appear on your front canvas. Tap on cross-section to activate the feature. Your reference point will now be highlighted in red. Tap on another point to see the cross-section details showing the length, rise and run between the reference point and the selected point. You can tap on different points to see cross-section information from your selected reference point. When you've completed all your layers and made any necessary adjustments, it's time to export your measurements. Simply tap on File, then select Export. You can choose to export your work as a PDF for general use or as DWG or DXF files if you need to work with CAD software. Customize the export settings as needed, email the file to yourself or a colleague and your detailed measurement project is ready to go. By following these steps and using Mosher's advanced features, you can easily capture, organize and export detailed measurements, saving time and delivering accurate data for your projects.